It was summertime on the island of Sodor, and the Scarlowy Railway was very busy as more people were coming to the railway. It was also really busy at the quarry, and Duncan hated it. All this extra work. It's a good thing our wheels haven't worn out. I agree with you there, Duncan. But it's not all that bad. And besides, sometimes we just have to put up with a bad situation and carry on with our work. Duncan was still grumbling when he returned to the sheds that night. Why can't the Think Controller bring a new engine to help us? We could use another engine on our railway. Duncan, it is very important that we do this extra work. At this time of year, the demand for slate is always very high, and the Think Controller says that he could not find another engine to help us. Pa, well maybe he should look harder. The next morning, all the engines went off to do their work, except for Peter Sam, as the Think Controller had a special job for him. Today, you will take a group of explorers into the hills on the far side of the railway. Peter Sam was very excited, and he steamed away immediately. When he arrived at the platform, the men hopped in into the carriage. And they set off. When they arrived at their destination, Peter Sam's driver and fireman had their lunch while the explorers scaled the steep hill. On the other side, they found an old engine shed. They went to investigate, and behind the shed, they found something that looked like an engine. Hello there. What's your name? I'm Smudger, and this used to be the Mid Sodor Railway. How did you end up like this? When I first arrived here, I was a very rough rider along the rails, and I would constantly derail. When the manager had enough with me, he said he was going to make me useful at last by putting me at the back of the sheds and turning me into a generator. That's awful. Yeah, but I am very sorry for what I did back then, and I want to be a useful engine again. Well, you're in luck. The Think Controller needs another engine, and I'm sure he'll be happy to restore you. Oh, thank you very much. When they arrived at Crovin's Gate, they told the Think Controller all about Smudger. I will send a recovery team first thing in the morning, and Smudger will be restored at the Sodor Steamworks. The Think Controller was as good as his words. The workmen arrived the next morning to remove all the stumps around Smudger. Then he was lifted onto Madge, and she took him to the Sodor Steamworks. When they arrived, Peter Sam was there to shunt Smudger inside. Hey Dookie, long time no see, am I right? <laughs> It's good to see that you're all right, Smudger. But when you're restored and running again, I will keep a close eye on you. Gonna keep me in order like the old days, eh? You haven't changed one bit, Dookie. But it's good to see you again, and it's good to see another Mid Sodor engine. But if you're gonna be working here, you're gonna have to prove yourself. And that's what Smudger did. Once he was restored, he was sent to work at the quarry. Smudger worked very hard, 
he made all of his deliveries on time, and he shunted the trucks carefully. After a few days, the thing controller was so pleased with him that he let Smudger take a few passenger trains. Is this your first time taking passengers? It is indeed. Well, you're doing a great job, Smudger. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Garloey. I will. Smudger loves his new life on the Scarloey Railway, but he was most happy to be reunited with his old friends, and they were happy that Smudger was a different engine. One day, Juke and Smudger were talking to Caitlin, the big red streamlined engine. Smudger had just finished telling Caitlin about the time he was turned into a generator and how a group of people managed to find him. That's incredible, Smudger! I can't imagine how terrible it must have been. No engine should be given a punishment as awful as that. That's just really sad to think about. I know. It was very terrible, and very boring too. But at least you are found in the end, and you are a hard-working engine once again. Thanks, Dookie. I mean, Duke. <laughs> well, I better go and get ready for my next train. It was really nice chatting with you two. I hope we can chat again soon. Goodbye, Caitlin. Hope to see you again soon. I never thought I would get the chance to talk to a Streamline engine. And now you have. As the two engines were beginning to chat again, Mr. Percival arrived. He had an important job for Smudger. Smudger, there is a special passenger train that needs to be taken up to the mountains. So, I would like you and Duncan to double-head it. Yes, sir! Smudger was excited as he chuffed away, but when he arrived at the carriage yard, Duncan wasn't excited at all. I don't understand why I have to go with you. I can handle this train myself. Two engines on one train seems like an overhaul if you ask me. Smudger ignored Duncan as they went to the station. When they arrived at the platform, James and Edward arrived with their passengers. <sighs> you two bear be careful. There is a lot of passengers, and this train was so heavy that I needed Edward's help. After hearing this, Smudger and Duncan became concerned. Once the passengers got on board, they headed off. It was easy at first, as the station was on the downward slope, but as they reached the open line, they felt the whole train getting heavier. Come on, come on! Get moving! Duncan thought that Smudger wasn't working hard and was slowing him down, but Smudger was trying his hardest to keep the train moving. I'm doing the best I can! Lazy wheels. Presently, they reached the tunnel. It was short and curvy, and Smudger knew this. Remember to keep your eyes on the track. But Duncan ignored Smudger and began to push him. Smudger was taken by surprise. Then suddenly... Smudger hanged dangerously over the edge. He was very scared, and so was Duncan as he held on tight. Their crews acted quickly. They put chains between the two engines and put planks of wood in front of Duncan's wheels to stop him from slipping. After waiting a while, Duke arrived to the rescue. All right, on the count of three, pull as hard as you can. Got it. Okay, one, two, three, pull. Pull. 
Duke and Duncan pulled as hard as they could, and at last, Smudger was safely back on the tracks. Then they continued their journey. Later, when they arrived back at the sheds, Duncan spoke first. Smudger, I'm so sorry for what happened. I didn't mean for that to happen. I just thought that you were being lazy, and I had to do all the hard work. But that wasn't the case. I do hope that you can forgive me. Well, it was an accident, and you did save me from falling. So, I think I can forgive you. Just don't let it happen again. I wouldn't even think about it. Suddenly, Mr. Percival arrived. Duncan, I have heard all about the incident, and I am very cross with you. As punishment, you will be working at the incline for the next three weeks. Yes, sir. But if you work hard enough while you're there, I will let you pull trains again. Duncan smiled. Then Mr. Percival turned to Duke and Smudger. For all your hard work today, you two can have the rest of the week off. Duke and Smudger were very happy. The next day, when they saw Caitlin again, they told her all about the incident. I guess that's now two scary situations you've been in, Smudger. Yes, indeed. Good thing I wasn't hanging there for very long, and I have Duke to thank for that. Well, if I left you hanging there. That would never suit his grace. The little engines on the Scarlowy Railway like to be kept very busy, but sometimes there is too much work for them, and they find themselves exhausted by the end of the day, and they cannot wait to get back home to the sheds to cool their boilers and rest their aching wheels. One night. Duke and Bertram arrived back at the sheds late and very exhausted. You two look very tired. Yes, we are. We worked our wheels off taking holiday makers up and down the mountains. Yes, indeed. But as long as they had a jolly good time, then that's all that matters. What's the matter? Can't handle a bit of hard work. Maybe you two should retire and let us do all the work. That's pretty big coming from engines who are afraid of ghosts. All the engines laughed, except for Duncan and Sir Handel. But before they could reply, the thin controller arrived. Silence. Now I know you all like to work hard, but there is more than enough work for you all to manage. So I ordered a new engine to help out with the extra work, an American engine to be specific. So I want you all to make him feel welcome as possible. All the engines promised to be as good as gold. Even Duncan and Sir Handel promised. The next morning, the engines woke up to a loud whistle coming from the distance. Oh no! It can't be. Duke's thoughts were proven corrected. There, in front of the engines, was a big red narrow gauge engine. He looked very strong. Hello there. What's your name? The name's Stanley. I'm an engine who's ready to do any type of work you lot are having trouble with. The thin controller arrived to give the engines their jobs. Good morning, everyone. I see you have all met Stanley, our new engine. He's going to be helping out with the goods work up at the slate quarry. Rusty, could you show him around, please? Yes, sir. Follow me, Stanley. Soon, Rusty and Stanley arrived at the slate quarry. Rusty explained what they had to do while Stanley listened carefully. When Rusty finished, he asked Stanley to shunt some empty trucks at the bottom of the incline. Suddenly, without warning, Stanley came off the rails. Ah, nuts! Rusty got the crane, and the workmen put Stanley back onto the tracks. Stanley then went back to work, being extra careful. 
But when he pushed some empty trucks onto the incline, he derailed again. Not again. Don't worry, accidents like this happen all the time. Just keep trying. Stanley didn't reply. Throughout the day, Stanley kept on derailing and had to be rescued by Rusty over and over again. And each time, the workman got more frustrated with him. That evening, when he arrived back at the sheds very upset, the thin controller was waiting for him. I thought you could manage your work, but I was wrong. Why do you keep slipping off the rails? I'm very sorry, sir, but it's not my fault. My wheels were not made for these railway lines. They can't get a good grip, and that's why I keep derailing. I'm not a trollmaker, sir. I always try my best, but my wheels just can't stay on the tracks. The thin controller thought for a moment. Then he spoke kindly to Stanley. If that is the case, then we must send you to the steamworks and get those wheels replaced. We cannot have any more accidents. And so it was arranged. Stanley went to the steamworks to get a new set of wheels. And after a week, Stanley came back to work and he had no more slip-ups as his new wheels fitted perfectly on the rails. He now works very hard and all the little engines were very happy to have him on their railway. Well, most of them, but that's another story. Stanley enjoyed his new life on the Scarlowy Railway and got along well with the other engines, all except for Duke, Sir Handel, Peter Sam, and especially Smudger. Back in the old days of the Minnesota Railway, the two engines had a big grudge against each other and they had both battled over who should have been the railway's number two, which eventually ended up with Smudger being turned into a generator and Stanley into a pumping engine, which they both blamed each other for. Now it seems that the old grudge has returned. Stanley and Smudger glared at each other. That night, the engines were all asleep except for Stanley and Smudger. Then Smudger spoke up. I'm shocked to see you back in service, Yankee. You're a danger to the rails. I should say the same thing to you, Slimeball. At least I was trying to be careful, even if my original wheels didn't help. Pa, I was more suited to be the railway's number two. Oh yeah, sure. You were very suitable, Smudger, even if you did derail like 20 times or more. Yeah, well, at least I didn't fail the railway by flooding the last slate mine. Now go to sleep. Stanley was hurt. That was the one fact that he could not ignore, and it has haunted him up to this very day. The workman back then never barred to fix him properly, but he still felt dreadfully guilty, even if it wasn't his fault. Soon, he went sadly to sleep. The next day, Stanley and Smudger were sent to the slate quarry to help Bertram. Soon, Smudger started showing off. I bet I could get a train together quicker than that rusty red Yankee could. Smudger, wait. I don't think that's a good idea. And he's gone. With that, Smudger started collecting all the trucks he could find, making a line of five trucks. He pushed them up to the incline and went on to the other line, but he didn't know that he went past a danger board. Stanley knew this and didn't say anything as he still felt hurt by what Smudger had said to him and was hoping to get payback. At the top, the load trucks bought a chance for trickery when they saw that the winch couldn't pull up five empty trucks up the incline. Break it! Snap it! With a loud snap, the trucks rocketed down the incline. Smudger was surprised and raced backwards as fast as he could. We can't go any faster. They're going to catch us. And they did, causing Smudger to go faster and faster. Then there was even more trouble. Freddy was waiting at a crossing. Luckily, 
No one was hurt, but Smudger felt dazed and surprised. His driver telephoned the quarry, and the manager came running to Stanley and Bertram. Smudger has had a terrible accident at the level crossing. You two need to go and rescue him. Huh? Bertram can go and rescue him. I'm staying here. Then he told Bertram what Smudger had said to him. Stanley, you know you weren't responsible for the MSR's closing. You know that. Smudger was only trying to hurt you, but you are both engines, and we must all pull together. Bertram's words had touched Stanley. You're right, Bertram. I'll go and help Smudger. That's the spirit, Stanley. Come on, let's go. Soon Bertram arrived, and he took the trucks away. When Smudger was back on the tracks, Stanley came to take him to the steamworks. It wasn't your fault. Trucks can be troublesome. I'm so sorry I was rude to you, Stanley. The other engines were right. You are a good engine. What do you say we put all of this behind us and be friends? Sounds good to me. So Stanley took Smudger to the steamworks, where the fin controller spoke sternly to him. Ever since that day, Smudger and Stanley have become good friends, and they, along with Juke, Peter, Sam, and Sir Handel, talked about the good old days of the Mid Sodor Railway.